I need my monster. Written by Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Read to you with permission from Flashlight Press. Tonight, when I looked under the bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Gone fishing, back in a week, Gabe. What was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing. His nose whistling. The scrabbling of his uncut claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe's familiar scary noises and his spooky green ooze? It was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week, and I just had to have a monster. I climbed quietly out of bed so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some strange ideas about monsters under beds. I knocked on the floorboards, then scrambled back under my covers. I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he be like? Would his snorting be as cheerful as Gabe's? When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that the substitute monster had arrived. Good evening, said a low breathy voice. My name is Herbert and I will be your monster for the evening. Herbert, what kind of name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever scared a kid before? Well, no, but I have read all the best books on the topic. Do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an overbite and I'm a mouth breather. Listen. <sighs> Herbert's panting was kind of scary, but it wasn't enough for me. Listen, Herbert, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is going to work. It's nothing personal, but I really need a monster with claws. Picky, picky, Herbert complained. As you wish, I'll go. There was some more creaking, and Herbert was gone. Some scratching warned me that a second monster had appeared. Good evening, he said in a high, silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, I will hold out an arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed hoping to see a horrible, shaggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Instead, I was surprised to see sleeky brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, I asked. But is that nail polish on your claws? Yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe professional monsters should always be well-groomed. I could tell this was not going to work either. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with scary claws, like Gabe's, I thought. I heard some more scratching, and I knew Ralph was gone. A minute later, a third voice from under the bed rasped. Check out these claws, kid. I gathered my courage and peered over the bed. The claws were impressive, jagged and dark, and razor sharp. So far, so good. I was a little nervous. Could you stick out your tail? I whispered. Sure, but don't get scared. I peeked through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. That's when I noticed the bow. Are you a girl monster? Of course I am, she snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yeah, I do, I admitted. I definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys, and girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. Well, aren't you a picky one, she sniffed, and then she was gone. Was I being too picky? No. I knew that my monster needed to be well-clawed and menacing. The whole point of having a monster, after all, was to keep me in bed, imagining all the scary stuff that could happen if I got out. 
Then I heard a shuffling noise. And some slobbering. A fourth monster was under my bed. Hey, my name's Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scuffy boy monster. I shivered. Maybe this one would work out. Those are excellent claws. But do you have a long tail? I leaned over to see. No, my tail is stumpy, Mac slurped. But I do have an unusually long tongue. Why would I be afraid of a long tongue? I asked. Oh, I don't know, he said, trying to sound terrifying. You never know when I might lick you. I fell back on the bed laughing. <laughs> well, if you're not even going to try to work with me, Mac whined. I held in my giggles. I really don't think you should send me away, he warned. Kids who reject five monsters in one night. I did not reject five monsters tonight, I interrupted. My regular monster went fishing. Fishing, eh? Maybe he just left because you're so picky. Fine, I'm out of here. But I wouldn't expect another monster tonight if I were you. How was I ever going to get to sleep without my monster? I was surprised to hear more creaking under the bed. Loud creaking, with scratching. I, I thought no more monsters were going to appear tonight, I said. Sorry I'm late, kid. Whew. It was Gabe. Then the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. So, you had some substitute monsters tonight, Gabe said, sharpening his claws on my bedpost. Were you scared? Then Gabe started tapping. I could tell he wanted to know if I still needed him. No other monster can scare me like you, I giggled, diving under my covers and pulling them up tight. Through the blanket, I heard Gabe's soft, comforting snorts. <laughs> ha! I knew it. We're made for each other, he growled. When my blanket started to slip off the bed, I knew Gabe was ready to eat. Now, if you could please stick out your foot, he said, I'd like to nibble your pinky. I yanked my blanket back up and scrunched my feet in so Gabe couldn't get them. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered pushing a pillow off the bed. I didn't even hear it hit the floor. Gabe was back. The ooze was perfect. Everything was back to normal. I shivered again. I'd be asleep in no time. Come back to Lulu's for more story time.